Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Expert Insights Webinars. I'm your host, Don McLean, and today's session is focused on preparing for an FDA inspection, what you need to know, presented by MMS. MMS is an innovative, data-focused, and technology-enabled CRO bringing insights from our global team of highly respected data and regulatory experts across four continents. Here to present today is Jennifer Perrin. Simon Powell, a UK counterpart of Jennifer's, was slated to be a co-presenter today, but due to unforeseen circumstances, won't be able to join us. For background, Jennifer is a Senior Quality and Compliance Specialist at MMS, with more than 20 years of experience in the pharmaceutical and medical device industries. Prior to MMS, she was a leader in regulated industries focusing on quality management systems, GMP, supplier quality management, auditing, and validation activities. <laughs> Thanks to our presenter for joining us today. As a reminder, your microphones will be muted for the duration of this session, and we'll send out a recording following this call. <laughs> and if you have any questions, please enter them in the Q&A at any time via the icon at the top right of your screen. We'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible at the conclusion of today's session. With that, I'll turn it over to Jennifer Perrin. Jennifer. Thanks, Don. During today's session, we will provide information on the different types of regulatory inspections that can be conducted. Then we will review how a firm can take a quality by design approach to inspection readiness. Finally, we will review the correlation between planning for submission and planning for inspection. Let's start with a review of the different types of regulatory inspections. Regulatory inspections will include an official review of documents, facilities, records, and any other resources that are deemed by the authorities to be related to the clinical trial or the manufacturing process. Every pharma company or clinical site is responsible for inspection readiness. This can be accomplished by providing the training to employees and ensuring their understanding, as well as their correct application of policies, standards, and procedures. The first step to ensuring FDA inspection readiness is to familiarize yourself with the various types of inspections. The FDA conducts four different types of inspections to ensure compliance of regulated facilities. The FDA initiates each inspection type based on different criteria. The first type of inspection is called a pre-approval inspection or PAI. The PAI assesses a manufacturing plant's production capabilities. The PAI seeks to establish whether the plant can adequately manufacture the product for which it has submitted a marketing application to the FDA. The next type of inspection is a product-specific or post-approval inspection. The FDA will typically conduct a post-approval inspection 8 to 12 months after approving the pre-market application. This occurs after the product has entered the marketplace. The third type of inspection is a system-based or routine inspection. All facilities, regardless of product type or location, must maintain FDA inspection readiness for routine inspections. Routine inspections, also called surveillance inspections, generally happen every two years. The last inspection type is a for-cause inspection. The FDA conducts for-cause inspections to follow up on prior validation, prior violations and or allegations. The following slides will provide more details on each type of inspection. The first type of inspection is called a pre-approval or PAI. Any, manu any, any manufacturing plant named for the first time in the following applications is subject to pre-approval inspection. A new drug application, or NDA, or an abbreviated new drug application, ANDA. A biologic license application, or BLA. A pre-market approval application for medical devices, or PMA. New animal drug applications, or NADA. Or abbreviated new drug animal applications, ANADA. 
The FDA will review a manufacturing facilities application and verify that design and manufacturing processes meet good manufacturing practice or GMP requirements. The three main objectives of a PAI are to assess a firm's readiness for commercial manufacturing, to assess the firm's conformance to the application that was submitted to the agency for approval, and finally, the PAI will cover data integrity to ensure the authentication of raw data that was submitted with the application. The inspector will recommend for or against FDA approval of the application based on the PAI results. Remember that you cannot legally sell medicinal products or devices in the U.S. market without FDA approval, so successfully passing a PAI is critical. The next type of inspection we will discuss is a product specific or post approval inspection. The FDA will typically conduct a post approval inspection 8 to 12 months after approving the pre market application. This usually occurs after the product has entered the marketplace. During a post approval inspection, the inspector often focuses on process validations and change controls. Lack of appropriate process validation documentation or inadequately controlled changes can often lead to performance issues, complaints or service repairs over time. This is why the post approval inspection will focus on these areas. The third type of inspection is a system based or routine inspection. Routine inspections can also be called surveillance and surveillance inspections and generally happen every two years. Regulations can and do frequently change to reflect the current regulatory climate. Routine inspections ensure that the facility maintains compliance with these changing regulations. The FDA will generally conduct an abbreviated inspection when a firm has a record of satisfactory GMP compliance with no significant recall or product defect or alert incidents. The FDA can also conduct an abbreviated inspection if there has been little shift in the manufacturing profile of the firm since the last inspection. For example, if there have been no major renovations or additions to the layout of the facility, an abbreviated inspection could be appropriate. However, the inspector will likely conduct a full inspection if the facility has a history of fluctuating into and out of compliance. So if a firm has been granted a clean bill of, clean bill of health on the past few inspections, meaning few to no observations made by the agency, then it is plausible that the FDA may conduct an abbreviated inspection. The last inspection type is a four type for cause inspection. The FDA might learn of compliance issues at a facility through results of a sample analysis, observations made during prior inspections, product recalls or market withdrawals, consumer or employee complaints, adverse reaction reports, or suspicion of fraud. Inspections related to reported issues are always unannounced and often unscripted. As such, there's no guaranteed way to ensure FDA inspection readiness for these types of inspections, except by maintaining compliance with current regulations. Four cause inspections are directed towards the identified or suspected quality problem. If applicable, the inspector will attempt to trace the underlying cause of the problem. This in turn will help the firm develop appropriate corrective actions. Now we'll dive deeper into what exactly inspection readiness is. Inspection readiness, or IR, is just what the title implies, being inspection ready. Being prepared for inspections helps build a culture of safety and compliance within an organization. And it's simply good, good business. Preventing problems is less costly than remediation, after all. Of course, inspection readiness also makes it easier for FDA personnel to do their jobs of accessing information 
and assessing a firm's level of regulatory compliance. True inspection readiness should supplement internal audits with a practical inspection process and focus behavioral training for key personnel. This can include having standard operating procedures or SOPs on how to handle regulatory inspections, providing audit readiness training for staff and conducting mock inspections. Mock inspections provide opportunities for the organization to identify and more importantly, correct process gaps prior to an inspection. Like any process, inspection readiness needs a plan that is executed, assessed, and continuously improved upon. Preparing for a successful inspection should not be a single activity, but part of an everyday culture of maintaining compliance. Being inspection ready requires a commitment to quality and compliance from the entire organization. The Pharmaceutical Quality by Design, or QBD methodology, is a systematic approach to development that begins with predefined objectives and emphasizes product and process understanding and process control based on sound science and quality risk management. During pre-approval inspections under a QBD concept, the regulatory inspection team will assess the implementation and effectiveness of the process design as described in the application and whether knowledge and risk management have been transferred successfully from development to manufacturing. The inspection will evaluate the quality system and its effectiveness regarding consistent product quality, management process improvements, deviation management, and knowledge and risk management during the product life cycle. Design, testing, and monitoring programs that demonstrate robustness and consistency will be highlighted. So how do you know if you're ready for an inspection? Let's ask some questions then discuss this further. Do you examine all of your processes critically and without bias as the FDA would? This is the value of the corporate compliance point of view. Use your internal QA group or the value that comes from expert service providers like MMS to provide this perspective. Again, even if a firm is performing self-assessments or internal audits, that does not necessarily mean that a firm is inspection ready. Internal audits are usually less informal and do not get to the same granular level that a regulatory inspection does. Have you put corrective and or preventative actions or CAPAs in place to address any nonconformances found? Remember, it's better for your firm to identify a nonconformance, correct and prevent recurrence, rather than having a regulatory agency find it for you and issue an observation. Are you familiar with the applicable regulations? Know what your inspector knows. This will allow you to better anticipate and prepare for their requests and questions. Is your staff ready to host an inspection? Your firm must have an inspection procedure that defines roles and responsibilities of personnel during an inspection. Do you have subject matter experts or SMEs identified that will be able to speak with inspectors. It's worth noting here that it's not unusual while conducting a facility tour for the inspector to ask questions of shop floor operators. The inspector will expect the operator to answer the questions they ask, not the tour guide. You must ensure that your staff has had audit and counter training. This will provide them confidence when answering questions from an inspector. Some more questions you can ask to determine your level of readiness are, do you have an efficient process to retrieve any documentation requested during the inspection? Remember, during an inspection, the expectation is that requested documentation will be provided in a timely manner. A delay in providing the requested documentation could lead to additional questions or concerns from the inspection team. 
Are you prepared to make any necessary corrections during the inspection? If a compliance weak point is discovered during the inspection, see it as an opportunity. If the firm is able to correct or put a plan to correct the non-conformance in place during the inspection, then it's possible that the inspector may not issue an observation. And finally, who will be responsible for responding to the agency after the audit? If you are issued an observation or finding, you must respond in writing within the allotted time frame. Have you identified the systems that present the highest level of risk to your firm? The core areas listed here are critical, regardless of the size of the sponsor or sector being audited, and should be your focus for adherence to regulations and best practices. You should have robust documentation practices and complete and accurate records. You should have a quality management system or QMS that ensures your procedures and standardization fit your company and personnel experience. Although a QMS can be paper-based, it should be noted that many firms are moving to an electronic QMS, which must be validated. You should have the right people in the right roles. Remember that personnel experience, knowledge, and training must be documented and available for regulatory inspection. You should have procedures governing chemistry, manufacturing, and control, or CMC, that help to define process controls and associated data and provide manufacturing oversight. Pharmacovigilance, or PV, and medical monitoring procedures should ensure compliance with reporting timelines, assessment of complaints or adverse events, and communication to sites. Clinical operation procedures should be established for activities such as principal investigator or PI selection, clinical oversight, and site training. Internal and external audits should be conducted against an established schedule to ensure oversight. If your firm has robust procedures in place for these bulleted topics and can demonstrate continued compliance with your established procedures, then you can be confident in having a positive inspection experience. Be sure to utilize your risk management procedures to identify the potential compliance risks at your firm. Ask these questions. Are your systems updated? Are training files complete? Is your trial master file or TMF properly populated? Are your procedures maintained? Are your vendor systems compliant? Are your site's system compliant? And do we have proof? Prioritize where the evidence is lacking and put mitigation strategies in place. These quality tools will help you achieve a state of inspection readiness. Having trained and competent employees is crucial during an inspection. Having detailed contracts or quality agreements in place clearly defines the expectations needed for compliance to regulations. Conducting internal audits allows your firm to ensure continued compliance with internal procedures and regulatory requirements. Finally, Periodic reviews, including metrics, allow your firm to monitor progress being made towards achieving compliance. Don't forget the why. Begin with the end in mind when developing your IR program. Remember, you are doing this for the patients. Is the product you are supplying safe, pure, and effective? Would you be confident in your product being given, given to your friends or family? You cannot guarantee that you are providing a quality product to the end user if you are not in compliance with regulations and can provide evidence as such. Additionally, attainment of the goals may be critical to your business's continued success. Now we'll review the correlation between planning for submission and planning for inspection. For efficiency, 
While your regulatory team is working to prepare the application submission, your leadership and quality teams, along with area owners, should be preparing for the inspection. Communication is key for planning. Regulatory teams are critical for sharing their knowledge base on submission timing and processes. Building trust in your team allows for a smoother submission process, inspection preparation, and process flow. When everyone is involved and engaged, preparations will be successful. IR should start even before your submission has been finalized. Your application for product approval defines your procedures and processes used in producing a quality product that meets regulatory requirements. Your firm has to ensure that you are adhering to the procedures and processes defined in your submission. A large part of a successful IR process is being able to identify and remediate any gaps in your systems prior to the inspection. As with most important initiatives, site leadership buy-in and continued support is key. Now we'll review the correlation between planning for submission and planning for inspection. Preparations for electronic submissions must begin prior to the actual submission. You must complete the appropriate computer system validation or CSV and have an approved validation master plan or VMP. As part of your inspection readiness plan, you need to ensure that the systems used for your electronic submission have been validated and that the associated documentation has been reviewed and is available during the inspection process. Also, as part of your IR plan, you must ensure that the appropriate level of security is in place surrounding your document storage location. This includes access and disaster recovery or backup procedures. Your IR plan should also consider record retention timelines. Remember, your inspection readiness plan should be documented. Be sure to allow enough time to adequately address any gaps prior to having an inspector show up at your door. As a deliverable from your IR plan, gap assessments will help narrowing your focus and provide tangible goals. A review of previous inspections, complaints, or industry trends can also be used in determining where the weaknesses are. Execute your inspection readiness plan through the use of internal audits, mock inspections, and action item follow-up. As part of the execution, ensure that applicable staff have been adequately trained on the components of the IR plan. Non-compliances or gaps that are identified during this process must be investigated as appropriate and the impact determined. Be sure to document CAPAs that are generated as part of this exercise. Closure of CAPAs prior to the actual inspection is optimal. From beginning to end, project planning and documentation of the preparations will provide evidence of intended compliance and control over your systems. Risk assessment provides evidence for compliance or for necessary improvement where impact is in question. In closing, remember that quality is not a destination at which you arrive. It's a continuous journey. Thank you for your time today. I hope at this point you have a better understanding of what it takes to achieve inspection readiness. We'll now take a few minutes for questions. Thank you, Jennifer, for your insights. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, we'd like to move on to the Q&A portion of this webinar. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit them into the Q&A portion. We do have two questions thus far. <clears throat> 
Jennifer, the first question is, how would an internal audit demonstrate the objective level of the company's inspection readiness? Good question, Don. Um, as we talked earlier in the presentation, while internal audits are important and a necessary part of your QMS, internal audits alone aren't enough to ensure inspection readiness. Um, so, you know, as we talked about, we prefer the concept of preparedness and readiness. So if you can ensure a commitment to quality, which requires proactive risk management, I think that'll go a, far, a long way in addition to your um, into in addition to your audit, your internal audit performance. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, the second question. What tools would you suggest could be used to help with the constant review of inspection preparedness state of the sponsor? Uh, regular meetings, inspection readiness teams, thoughts on that? All of the above. <laughs> so um, again, you have to have a plan. You have to have buy-in of that plan. And you have to continuously execute the plan so that you can improve upon it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Jennifer. And it doesn't appear that we have any other questions that have come in thus far. So um, <clears throat> if anybody has additional questions on what you heard today, please follow up with your point of contact at MMS directly or email media at mmsholdings.com and we'll direct you to the presenter. Uh, for additional free webinars, visit mmsholdings.com slash webinars or follow us on LinkedIn for updates. Thank you very much for listening, everyone, and enjoy your day.